From April 17th to April 24th, 2012, friends from all over the world gathered for the Sixth World Conference of Friends at Kabarak University near the town of Nakuru, Kenya. The theme of the conference was Being Salt and Light, Friends Living the Kingdom of God in a Broken World. The last gathering of this kind was in 1967. What new themes would emerge? How would friends from such different practices and in some cases different beliefs interact? What work are members of the Religious Society of Friends doing throughout the world? How are friends being salt and light? Friends World is because we are friends worldwide and we are a committee and the four consultation was to make it clear that we're not the Vatican. We have no authority at all. We take, my mantra for these eight years has been, we take our yearly meetings as we find them. Back in the 1800s, there was a series of splits in North America along theological lines, and they were very, so divisive that yearly meetings wouldn't talk to each other. I mean, just wouldn't talk to each other. They'd be in the same town. Families would be divided. It was, it was pretty nasty. But two or three generations after the splits, people said, you know, we ought to be talking to each other. And indeed, during World War I, one of the gifts mm. in World War I was to bring together friends in the relief work and peace work and conscientious objection being established. So in 1920, they had the first World Conference. And basically, it was a couple guys, one Brit and, and a, an American, saying, oh, let's do it, because they all knew each other. It was, mm. we were still a very small society at that point. So they had a meeting in 1920, and then decided to have another in 1937. And in 1937, they said, we need a mechanism for continuing these sort of loose relationships with each other, and that's okay. when Friends World Committee for Consultation was established. This is the first meeting, by having it here in Kenya, that we could more accurately reflect the demographics of the Religious Society of Friends. Each day of the conference began with worship led by friends from different sections of the world. With the light and salt, the world becomes a safer and better place. It is our duty that are for friends to make this world a better place to live. Participants then gathered in home groups, smaller gatherings of 15 to 20 that provided a setting for friends to get to know one another more intimately and share thoughts on their experiences of the conference. In the first half of the week, friends also gathered daily in one of the 43 thread groups, essentially interest groups on a particular topic led by those with a leading or passion in that area. You can yes. have that girl where you are going to do it. Then she was ashamed. She didn't want even to, to, to see me, but she, she said that we were going to challenge. Then in the latter half of the week, friends would gather all together in large plenary sessions to discern what, if any, weaving could be done with the different threads that were explored. But beneath all of the external events and the new faces and cultures, the questions many seemed to ask themselves and heard time and again were, will we get along? And how are we being salt and light? What connected me to ABP was my own personal experience. I have bought, my husband and I have bought a piece of land in a Kalenjin area. So in 1992, the very first clashes in Kenya, we lost everything because we were thrown out. And I didn't even know that you could be an internally displaced person. I thought it was, or even a refugee. It just looked like a story. But when it happened to me and I knew you couldn't actually walk in your own home, you were an enemy. Then, just from 1992, I just became... It, it just became now my passion to, to help people get, 
be at peace. We were at a conference, a quicker world conference in the Netherlands. Then in my home group we had Stephen Angel. So as we shared what we do, Stephen Angel told us about a program called AVP. We have done some prison workshops, but we have done very many community workshops. And when we tell them we are doing community work, they, it, it began in prison. They ask us, but we are not prisoners. So we tell them, but violence begins in the community. But it became more during, during and after the post-election violence. Because we were like, quite a number of us were facilitators. It was like we were prepared. Somebody says God uses a prepared mind. So we were prepared. And may this challenge open us to see with eyes unclouded who God still calls us to be. We will still seem very much the same on the outside as we return home. I'll go home to the northeastern United States. Last year, a great storm caused flooding worse than we've seen in a hundred years. Now the rivers have changed. The river beds are different. The heavy stones have been rolled away. The sand and soil reshaped. What lies beneath the surface has been transformed. And so the surface, the part that everyone sees, has changed as well. Like the rivers of my home, if we are inwardly changed in our time together, the nature of our witness, the testimony of our outward lives, will be different. <laughs> I'm the coordinator of the African Great Lakes Initiative, AGLI, which the Africans like to call AGLI, and it's a program of the French Peace Teams, which is 16 yearly meetings uh, in the United States. And we've been working here at it uh, when we started in uh, 1998, uh, and so that's now 14 years that we've been doing it. And one of our main projects is to support the uh, healing and rebuilding our communities program, which the Africans like to call HEROC. Our program is a real grassroots program, and it's based on Quaker concept that there's that of good and there's that of God in each person, and that that inner wisdom can be found and used. Uh, that we do, Burundi had one psychologist for uh, eight million people after the, the fighting there, so there's no way that they could get professional help. So we are, we just pick normal people and train them in our program, work with them first and then train them as facilitators and what we call healing companions. And so we pull out that inner wisdom that, that people have and maybe in the Western world people have lost because we've become too professionalized. Uh, so that's sort of the basis of, of, our, of our work. In 1993, I think out of the 21st October, um, the first Hutu elected president had been assassinated. And uh, my suburb in Musaga, Bujumbura, was attacked. So all the Hutus had to flee, and I followed the others, you know. In the middle of the um, journey, because we were just clamping a mountain, I was stopped by some people. They had guns. And they told me that I am a Tutsi, I could not you know, continue with the others. They thought I was just going to um, investigate how they are so that I may 
go back and tell the, the Tutsi military uh, soldiers and they may come and attack them. And they say, okay, you're going to be killed. So I stood there. I didn't know what, you know, I was just, I knew that that was my last day, my last minutes. But suddenly came somebody. I said, why have you put that guy aside? They told them, they told him he's a Tutsi and we want just to finish with him. And he said, no, I know him. He's a Hutu as we are. Let him go. And I asked him, do you know him really? He said, yes, I do. That's how I was saved. In fact, they were confusing me, looking at me tall and maybe thin, I don't know. That time I was still thin. <laughs> And I say, okay, he's a Tutsi. But um, I remember that night, it was really hard for me to believe it. I left my home, my mom and my brother and my two sisters. They, I don't know where, which way they took, you know. But here, I was going to be killed by Hutus. In a bush, I was just saying, what was going to happen to me? Uh, I wondered how many people had died in such circumstances. I remember from that day, I said, if I can get an opportunity, I will do all I can to help Burundians to get together. I think that one of the points of being in the broken world is you've, got to, you've really got to work at fixing it. And, and Quakers are really a positive people. You know, this thing that there's that of God in every person is a very positive, optimistic statement. And we work sometimes with people who've, who've done really bad things, but we have the belief that these people can be changed they, into becoming good, productive people. And we found that we are capable of, of doing this. So this gives me a lot of energy and work to continue with. Mm. When I first heard the theme of the world gathering, I found it's difficult to understand. It is a long, hard sentence. For Quakers, this is moving sentence. For evangelicals, this is gospel sentence. For liberals, this is cruel. <laughs> the love and care that we show for others, we don't do these things on purpose. These things are scripted. It automatically happens because of what we have here inside of us. When asked to speak on the topic of a broken world, I found it impossible not to think of my brothers and sisters in Christchurch. I also greeted all of us here today as one tribe, what I called Te Hahi Tu Hohuri. This is the Maori name given to Quakers in Aotearoa. It literally translates as the faith community that stands shaking in the wind of the spirit. Only love will get us through. Our love for God, our love for that of God in each other, and our love for the faith that none of us may be right, but all of us are righteous. We are all brothers and sisters of the faith community that stands shaking in the wind of the spirit. We are all te hahi tu hofuri. Midweek there was an excursion break from the routine and an opportunity to venture outside of the campus borders to experience Kenya.
Later that evening, there was a fair and exhibition to highlight Friends' projects around the world. While the excursions were a welcome break, friends were eager to get back into the swing of things. Home groups met every day except for the excursion day, and that break was felt. One day, a, candle, a match said to the candle, I have a mission to light you. Oh no, answered the candle in surprise. If you, if you light me up, then my days are numbered. Then no one will see the beauty of my shape and my color. So then, the match asked the candle, do you want to remain for the rest of your life cold, hard, and never to burn? But to burn? This would hurt and, and would use up my strength, murmured the candle. You're right, answered the match. But this is the mystery of your life and your noble mission. You and I were called to be light. What I can do as a match is very little. But giving my light to you completes the meaning of my life. It is only giving ourselves to others that we can live fully. Living as daughters and sons of the light. Amen. Sharing of World Resources is a nonprofit organization that gives microcredit grants to women, women's groups in Kenya, Sierra Leone, and also India. And so women put together proposals, usually as small communities, about whether they want to grow crops or weave baskets or um, gather firewood um, so that they can create small businesses that they can then pay back the loan that they originally received to other women in the community so that the money stays in the community and other women have more opportunities to create small businesses and, and then use that money to help send their children to school or um, to buy things necessary for their household. It's just an opportunity for women to kind of be self-sustaining and, and support their community um, and contribute to the church as well. Right Sharing of World Resources started um, in the mid 20th century. And it was originally a program of Friends World Committee for Consultation uh, until about 10 years ago when it became um, its own independent organization. If men will rely behind the women and give them the necessary support, both spiritual, financial, and even moral support, we'll have a greater world. Well, a biosan water filter is about three feet high and one foot square. It's a household water filter, although we have them in hospitals, clinics, orphanages, and uh, any place else? Schools <laughs> uh, and colleges. So water was always a big issue mm -hmm. and that's how we really became thoroughly aware of water and uh, 
So I thought there had to be something to do to improve that situation because a third of the income of a lot of the people is uh, for bottled water. So and as Dell got ready to retire, he was looking for something to do and he found information about Biosan water filters on our website. And then we were vacationing in Mazatlan, Mexico. And um, we were visiting uh, small churches in the area and there was a church with uh, two couples from Canada that were making Biosan water filters. So Dell was asking him lots of questions <laughs> and, and they uh, asked him if he wanted to help build them the next day. I went to the beach, but Dell went to build biosand water filters. There are priorities in life, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's an old Quaker saying, as way opens, and that's really what's happened in our lives. Um, the, the way has opened in many ways for us to go to different countries. Uh, we've done most of our work in Kenya, but we've also been to Burundi, India, and Honduras. Late in day five, we had a visit from the president of Kabarak University and the former president of Kenya, His Excellency Daniel Arap Moy. After the initial days of celebrating our togetherness and diverse expressions of faith, going deeper, some areas of real difference began to emerge. Epistles of support for the World Conference, essentially letters from various friends groups, were posted outside the plenary hall to be shared by all. Included in this was an expression of love from friends for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer concerns. This one epistle was anonymously removed from the wall, an act that brought to light the tension around how friends of different cultures and different theological traditions view the issue of sexual orientation. The topic was raised and discussed openly at many home groups and individually among friends of all persuasions later that day and for the rest of the conference. Though nothing was resolved, lines of communication were opened. And larger questions were raised. Do friends have the tools to address difficult topics in an open, loving, and spiritual manner? To seek the will of the Spirit openly when some friends point to what is written in the Bible as definitive and others base their beliefs on experience and continuing revelation. The division isn't about gay, straight, or whatever terminology people use for that. The division is on the position of truth, how we understand truth. So let's have a conversation about the nature of truth. Let's see where we are about that. Uh, the division between conservative and liberal, I believe, is a false dichotomy anyway. It's a, I believe both the conservative voice and the liberal voice are very necessary to moving forward as friends, as Christians even. There's a conservative and liberal element in my own meeting. And they often want to uh, counterbalance, point and counterpoint with one another. And my perception is that the conservative voice are the people who love the truth and they don't want to compromise on what we know already. They f have a sense that something's being threatened and we might lose something very important, maybe unintentionally. That voice is very important. We need that caution. And then on the other hand, we have the liberal voice and their hearts beat for the new thing God is doing every morning, the streams he's going to make in the desert. And um, they fear when someone raises a question about the standard or what we know already, they fear being suppressed and we're, not, we're going to miss the flow of God's spirit among us. If we could sit together and accept one another tolerate one another at least, and work together, we might find ourselves in a flow of God's movement as opposed to jerking around back and forth, uh, spinning our wheels.
We are united with God. We work in God's strength. We listen to God, follow God's promptings. We listen to each other, for God's promptings may come through other people. I cannot tell you what your ministry is. Only you can find that. But I'm sure that there are amongst us people who can speak to needs in this world because they know about hurt. We are here because of Rescue and Orphan project. The project is salt and the light in the community. Mm -hmm. It is salt because it is preserving the lives of these children. Yes. It is giving flavor to these children. Mm -hmm. It is giving a purpose of living to these children. Mm -hmm. It's a light because it is directing them. It has brought love mm -hmm. to them, mm -hmm. and that's the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. Living in this broken world, yeah. the children were broken. The community were looking at these children as people who have been forgotten, mm -hmm. people who don't have hope. Mm -hmm. But with this help, now the children have hope. Mm -hmm. So I believe even in the community, Rescue an orphan is salt and light because we help an orphan, we help a widow, we help the HIV infected people, those who are children who are affected with jiggers, we help them. In the video you will see everything that he, God has helped us to do. It's God, it's not us. If I see where I started the last year, where I am this year, it's God. So what themes emerged? 
The Religious Society of Friends is larger and more expansive than almost anyone had imagined. And the society is comprised of all types, liberal, unprogrammed, programmed, evangelical. To talk about friends as one type without acknowledging the others is incomplete. However, we are in fact all friends. Although difficult issues came to light, friends were able to address them with mutual respect, and we realized that we have much in common and much to learn from each other. There seemed to be a desire to seek the Spirit amongst everyone, because everywhere the question was asked, seemingly by everyone, how am I led to serve the Spirit? Light, refracted through a crystal, scatters arcs of iris like spilt grains across the floor. A life begun in distant memory, ends dispersed in infinite hues. While for the living, sweat creeps across inquiet flesh, under a high sun of service and unfinished task, now evaporates, leaving salt crystals upon the brow. The trace of transformation walks with us always. While the salt of steel and blood and arid land, of salt tax and land march, faces the scent nourished in the righteous light of dawn's tide, to blow like winds upon the towers of salt, so admired and adored. A tower of salt, writes Octavio Paz, against the green pines of the shore, the white sails of the boats arise, light builds temples on the sea. While temples of the land inter salt-wrapped bodies in restless toil against the light's travail across day and cosmic season. Their virtues, written in rock or sand, reformed in the shifting deserts to glisten like stars in the wanderings of the night, abjected remains of the past to fertilize the myths of the new. And faith, astride the reins of the age's chariot, surfs the shifting landscape below. I am my earth, I am my air, I am connected, where beneath the sea all islands are the same. And these salt crystals, disappeared through houred glasses, leave only light to inspire our caprices once again. Every minute of this conference is an experiment. Because I know I didn't understand the silent group of Quakers. I didn't even neither like them. But uh, when we came here, I discovered the, the difference, you know, when we were talking to, to through experience and sharing one of the thread groups. Other than you talking to God always, it is better to have some time to keep silent and then God also talk to you. We didn't know about that. And I almost didn't come just because my brother uh, passed away about a month ago. So um, I thought that might have been the roadblock, but in fact I turned it into a healing experience. So I've come here and 
truly it has been a healing experience because I'm surrounded by immense amount of love and um, just the warm, friendly people of Kenya has just opened my head you know, immeasurably. Because he lives, I confess tomorrow. Because he lives, God fear is gone. Because I know he knows the future. It's been very gratifying. The theme, of course, salt and light and being that in the world, again, matches what we're about. And um, I think that inspiration. I wasn't expecting to see so much unity among friends and a real, I think what, what sometimes people fear when you bring many traditions together is that there'll be, you know, one preacher will be for this group and one preacher will be for that group or one form of worship will be for this area and not for the other. And I just have not experienced that and I've talked to many friends from different traditions and uh, seeing the speakers, and especially so many speakers under the age of 30, um, able to speak across traditions and across... Mm -hmm. um, theology, you know, really yeah. theological lines. I think it's those kind of exchange and experiences makes uh, like big difference and so finding similarities among the cultures or among the societies or the sometimes you find exactly the same problems conflicts among the different uh, societies in different places uh, over the world which is really inspiring and so you 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 see more deeply and so say saying that oh or, or you learn of course from uh, like I have been learning from Marciana many things, like doing in the in, in his in, in her work or something like that. Yeah. It's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. I start afresh. Start afresh, yeah. please. It sounds yeah. great. It Are you beating the slap again? <laughs> no, no, we're not slapping <laughs> you anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and look at Lane. Yeah, yeah. We're not slapping you again. All right. Neonapo amani kama shwari au neonapo shida kwa hali zote umeni ju li shamimi ni salama roho ni mwangu salama roho ni mwangu mimi ni salama roho ni mwangu salama Roho ni mwangu mimi, ni salama roho ni mwangu. Inga wa shetani, hata nitesa mimi, nitechipamo, yo kwani. Kristo ameona unyonge wangu mimi. Ame kufa kwa roho yangu. Salama. Roho ni mwangu mimi. Ni salama roho ni mwangu. Salama. Roho ni mwangu mimi. Ni salama roho ni mwangu. Dhambi zangu zote wala sinu subaba Zimewe kwa musala bani Wala sichukui lana ya kemimi Ni salama roho ni mwangu Salama Mwangu Roni mwangu mimi ni salama roho ni mwangu 
สาลามารูในเมืองคูมิมีในสาลามารูฮูนีเมืองคูเอบุนัยมิซาสิกุยาคูจับบาบายังคูเอปันเดตักาโพลิอาอุตักาปูชุกะสิตาโอโกพามิมิวานานิสลามารุฮุนีมวังกูสลามารุนิมวังกูมิมิน i สลามารุฮุนีมวังกูสลามารุนิมวังกูมิมิน i สลามารุฮุนีมวังกูสลามารุนิมวังกูมิมิน i สลามารุฮุนีมวังกูสลามารุนิมวังกูมิมิน i สลามารุฮูนีมวังกูฮาเลลูยาโอ้ยโอ้ยฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่าฮ่า